from this computer. Uh, also, I just sent out the allergic reactions lecture. Uh, so you have seven days from today to complete that um, if you weren't in the class last time for that, that lecture. Uh, let's see. So recording. Yeah, all right. So anatomy and physiology, so you have abdominal anatomy. So obviously contains many organs, both hollow and solid. Solid organs just means that they're more vascular, hollow organs are less vascular. Uh, so the hollow organs would bleed out more as opposed to your hollow organs. Uh, can cause co confusion when determining the cause of abdominal emergencies. And that's because there's so much going on in that area that you can't really pinpoint where that pain is actually coming from. And that, that's what makes it so difficult. Uh, thorough patient assessment is key. Uh, specific diagnosis may not be necessary. Treatment is the same for most conditions. So like I said, because you are out in the field, uh, no EMT or paramedic could really pinpoint and make sure that they know exactly what's going on with the patient. So therefore, uh, the priority is to treat for shock for these patients. Uh, we do what we can given the situation, but ultimately, like any other patient, they need definitive care, and that definitive care is taking them to the hospital. So region between so the abdomen the abdomen is your stomach that's all that is abdomen equals stomach and it's right below your diaphragm and your pelvis your diaphragm is that muscle that contracts downward to allow air to come into your lungs right so the diaphragm is right below your chest and right above your stomach it's that dividing point between the stomach and the chest uh, and the pelvis follows after your stomach all right, so as far as what's in, the, in this area, which system? So digestive system, reproductive system, uh, endocrine system, and regulatory system. So these are, this is what's being affected or could be affected if uh, you, your patient has some kind of damage to the, the abdomen. So the biggest takeaway from this picture that I want you guys to understand and get is that most of your solid organs are going to be on the top portion of the stomach. They're going to be on the epigastric area of the stomach. Most of your hollow organs are found right here. Your, your intestines, your stomach falls kind of in both areas. But the reason that this matters is because if the pain is epigastric and you have some bleeding up here, there's a potential for a good amount of blood loss because of all these uh, solid organs. Your liver is very vascular, has a lot of blood. If one of these ribs were to, pump, were to uh, break and puncture a liver, your patient could be, bleed out quite a bit. Now, uh, most patients, you're gonna not even notice that there's distension or discoloration in the abdomen because of bleeding out until they lose approximately two to three liters of blood. At that point, it's real significant because if your patient has lost two to three liters of blood, they've just lost about half of their volume. And that, that half of the volume is out of their veins and their arteries and in the stomach outside of the system. So it's not gonna be of any use to your patient. Um, and that's why it's a big deal. So it is divided into four sections, um, right upper, lower upper, right lower, um, left lower. Uh, epigastric region and here is a visual of the quadrants uh, it's good to remember them especially when you're talking to a doctor or a nurse we talk in medical terminology when we're on the field out on the job so knowing your quadrants is very very important and here uh, your diaphragm is right here so the diaphragm is the division between it divides the stomach the abdomen from the chest the thoracic cavity See, abdominal organs. All right, so the peritoneum. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but I'm, pre I'm pretty, but I think I did. Um, the peritoneum is the skin of the organs. So every single organ in your body has like an extra membrane. So it has a layer that covers it. Just like how we have skin, every organ in your body also has its own, its own 
version of skin. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not actual skin. It's a membrane. A membrane is just a, some flesh, some tissue that covers something, like our skin. That would be a membrane. Uh, so that, that's what the peritoneum is. It's, it's, uh, the peritoneum is a continuous membrane. And what it does is that um, it, it covers the inside of your stomach and it lines up the inside front of your stomach and then it kind of folds on itself and comes back around and individually uh, encapsulates other organs within your stomach. I'm not sure if I, that makes sense, but let me see if I could uh, go back to this one. All right, so let's say that your peritoneum, that membrane, will line up the front of your stomach. So it lines up the front of your stomach. So we'll say that this is the front, right? Uh, it's not a good picture for this. Let me see if I can find a better one, actually, because it doesn't. Oh, perfect. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So the peritoneum will line the inside of your stomach. So if you're in here, let's say you like, I shrunk you and I just stuck you right here. You're, you're right here. And you're looking this way. You're looking outward towards the belly button. If you're lo looking outwards to the belly button, that membrane will come all the way down and cover the, the, the front, in, the inside of the front of the stomach. And it will overlap, come back around on itself and individually wrap each organ. All right, not each organ, but the ones that it does. And that's what it does. It's a membrane of the organs. It's just a layer of protection. So you have uh, the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum. So the other example that I use as far as membranes is the membrane of the lungs. And those that don't remember, uh, that one is called the pleura. So the membrane that covers the organs in your abdomen and your stomach itself is called the peritoneum, all right? The membrane that covers the lungs is called the pleura. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but the lungs have two layers of membrane. One that covers the lungs completely, and then you have one over the, over the entire lungs over both lungs that encapsulates both lungs. So it has two membranes. One membrane encapsulates each lung individually and the other one wraps both of them together. Parietal peritoneum is the one that's on the outside. Just like parietal pleura is the outside, the top membrane, and visceral peritoneum is the membrane that is on the bottom that's actually encapsulating the organs. But the thing is that it's, there, there really aren't two membranes. It's just one continuous membrane, but because it overlaps on itself and it, and it folds and goes back around, that's why uh, we, we uh, categorize it into two different categories, parietal and visceral. All right. So like I said, uh, this membrane encloses most, obviously most enclose uh, within Organs and of the abdomen most enclosed within parietal peritoneum. Uh, a few lie extra peritoneal space outside of the peritoneum. And these are the ones that do lie outside of the peritoneum. If you do, know, do not know this, I would write this down. You will see a question regarding this in one way or another on your NRMT. Because I do remember seeing this question um, a question that re refers or regards to this for both the EMT and advanced EMT tests that I took. So go ahead and write this down. It's a quick little note. 